All right, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about our first major Rocky Mountain snowstorm of the season so far. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out our links in our description for our social medias, particularly the Instagram, which I will leave a link to in the pinned comment. We've been doing a lot of work on that daily posts, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of great stuff on there. Now, what I want you to pay attention to, we're looking at our current warnings from, uh, this is from the National Weather Service, but I'm looking at these through Pivotal Weather, great website, I highly recommend checking that website out, very great website, if the owners of Pivotal Weather, I don't even know who owns it, if you're watching this video, I love your website, uh, and thank you for providing such great weather tools to the public, it, it's really easy to use, so I highly recommend it to people who want an easy to use website for weather. Now... Um, what we're wanting to pay attention to here is mostly Montana and Idaho and Washington, which is where we're going to be seeing most of our snow. Now, in that kind of orange mustard color, that's where we have a high wind warning. So there's going to be a lot of windy conditions here as we see this low pressure system go south of you and then curve up north to your east. Uh, so we're going to be dealing with this for a long time as it's going to make a turn and continue to impact those regions for days and days. Within that darker shade of blue, we're expecting, uh, it's a, actually, we're in a winter storm watch, and then within the pink regions, we're in a winter storm warning. Now, the pink areas in Wyoming and Colorado and Utah, that's actually just red flag warnings, not winter storm warnings. I just wanted to clear that up because a lot of, I mean, it's two different shades of pink, but you can hardly tell sometimes. Sometimes you can hardly tell, or some people. Now, we're going to be looking at our streamlines. This is basically our jet stream, and I wanted to show you what's happening right about now. And this is all according to the GFS. A lot of people ask why I don't use the European. You're not technically allowed to share the European on a commercial level. It is a paid product, so it isn't really fair to really broadcast it. It goes into my forecasts, but a lot of times I, I avoid showing it you know, just the raw data of the European. So that's why we go ahead and show the GFS instead. A lot of people are like, why do you show the GFS and not the European? And why, why are you hugging the GFS? Uh, it's the, one of the only models we're actually allowed to show. So now you can tell that this is for today. Uh, we we kind of have a, ri a little bit of a ridge there for the West. Not a lot's going on. And there's some low pressure systems going to the north of Montana and Idaho, but not a lot of any sort of precipitation yet. But by the 28th, Saturday the 28th, we do have a low pressure system starting to develop in Nevada, and there is a trough, so we are seeing colder temperatures with low pressure system in the area bringing precipitation, a lot of that being wintry precipitation for these regions, and this actually has the potential and the ingredients to be a very major type of situation here. Uh, it reminds me a lot of class uh, of a lot of classic snowstorms out there west and just the storm track. It's a beautiful storm. Uh, and then you can see by Monday, September 30th, this is where it starts to do that curve thing I was telling you about. This is two days later, and it's only moved from Nevada to Colorado, and now it's heading north. So it's going to head north into the Dakotas area and still continue to impact those northern Rockies as it makes that turn. When they make a turn around an area like this, we see impacts last longer and longer because all it's doing is kind of going around you but staying at the same distance, but it's just changing locations kind of in a circular motion around you. So that's how you kind of have to picture it. We do see the impacts last longer in scenarios where it does take this curve north. Uh, now we're going to be looking at our kind of simulated reflectivity, or this is going to give us our precipitation type kind of view. Now we're going to be looking on 12-hour increments. First off, we're looking at 18Z Thursday. So this is kind of earlier in the day, Thursday, kind of afternoon or late morning hours on Thursday. You can see there is some rain in the area, and we do see our low-pressure system to the north. These are going to kind of merge later on, but this is the 26th. Um, now, by the 27th, you can see there is some snow to our north in Canada. There's a little bit of some mixed showers there in Montana, but not a lot going on. This is very, very early in the morning Friday, maybe even middle of the night time on Friday. Then you can see here by kind of late afternoon Friday, I know it says 0Z Saturday, but that's Zulu time, which is uh, a lot later than our times here in the United States. So it, it's about... Uh, you know, sometime in the later evening of Friday by this point. 
And you can see we do have snow entering Washington and Montana by this point. And you can see, again, our low-pressure system there down on the bottom of the screen in Nevada. We're going to move on to 12Z Saturday. So this is going to be heading more towards the morning time of Saturday. And we see that low-pressure system move right over about Salt Lake City area in northern Utah there. And we do see some rain showers to the north of that. And for the Yellowstone areas in Wyoming, kind of that northwestern region of Wyoming, we do see some snow starting to occur. But mostly northern Washington, northern Idaho, and northern Montana by this point, seeing the biggest impacts with some heavier snow happening here by morning time Saturday. And we're going to be moving on to kind of late evening Saturday. And you can see some very, very heavy snow there for northern Montana, as well as some of the northwestern corner of North Dakota there. We're seeing some heavier snow and some moderate snow still for northwestern Wyoming and some some elevation snow, I would call it, along the West Coast states, so Oregon, Washington, and California, Nevada alike. We're seeing some higher elevation snowfall there, but mostly Idaho, Montana, and, and Wyoming are seeing the heaviest snow by this point, as well as a little bit of North Dakota there as well. Now, by Sunday morning, we are seeing snow persist through the northern Rockies, Montana, Idaho. All these regions are still seeing heavy snowfall. Our low-pressure system is now located in the very southwest corner of Wyoming at a 995 millibar. Now, by Saturday, or this is by Sunday, kind of heading towards Sunday night, maybe Sunday late evening, we see this low-pressure system located in the corners of Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska, right where those three states border. We have a 988 millibar storm now, and it's going to start making its way north by this point. So it's about to make its turn, and you can see the snow is still falling in those same areas in Montana and Idaho. And this is why this is going to be such an impactful snowstorm, because we're going to see such heavy snowfall for so long. And this is going to lead to the potential for very, very heavy snowfall amounts. And you can see it is starting to head north by this point. You can hardly see it now. It's started the weekend. This is September 30th, and we still see light snow there for Montana. Uh... And we're seeing snow showers persist as we head October 1st. Uh, we're still seeing Idaho, Wyoming see some snow showers as well as Oregon and Nevada. But by October 1st, kind of, you know, midday time, we will see a high pressure system set in for Montana. And we will see the snow basically come to a stop by this point on October 1st, Tuesday, October 1st. That's finally when the snow will be said and done, and it will most likely be cold in a lot of the areas that have seen their snow fall for at least three days, and around the 4th, it's going to start to warm up a little bit there, maybe melt some of the snow away. Anyway, here's our GFS accumulated positive snow depth change. Basically, all you need to know about that, I know that's a lot of words. Instead of just the snowfall total, this is actually the amount of total snowfall that has accumulated and not melted on contact. That's a cool tool we have with the GFS where it allows us to see the actual snow that should be on the ground according to this model. Now, a lot of those blues through the light pinks, that's where we're looking at about anything from a dusting to four inches of snow. So for a lot of California, Nevada, Utah, and Oregon, that's about as much as we're going to get besides some very, very high elevation areas, mostly going to be under four inches of snow for those states, with the exception, again, of mountain tops and a lot of very high elevation areas. Now, Washington, uh, you can see we do have some of those areas that are only in a dusting to four inches, but we do have a lot of areas that exceed that light purple and kind of head into the pink for a lot of those central high elevation areas in Washington, as well as the northern regions of Washington, at least the inland northern regions. Uh, we do see 6 to 12 inches of snow possible for a lot of these areas, and the mountaintops could get up to tw from 12 to 24 inches of snow for some of those very high elevation mountaintops for Washington. Uh, again, the pinks are 6 to 12 inches of snow, just in case you're just looking at the map and you don't need me to break it down. That's kind of what we're looking at. The border of Idaho and Montana, we have a lot of areas in that pink where we're expecting 12 to maybe 16 inches of snow for those higher elevation areas in between Washington and, or sorry, Montana and Idaho. And you can see a lot of areas in central Montana that expect to get the heaviest amounts of snow are looking to get maybe 24 inches plus, maybe even uh, up there in the, it looks like according to the GFS, up to 40 inches of snow. I'm not going to go ahead and say that's most likely. 
I think that it is possible that we do see very, very extremely heavy snowfall like that, but it's not necessarily uh, the most likely thing. We could see some a lot of areas exceed 24 inches of snow, especially high elevation areas and the areas that get the heaviest amounts of snow obviously the areas that get those heaviest bands within this which at you know 120 hours out we can't necessarily forecast precisely but we do know that there will be in heavy a heavier area of snow that sets up somewhere that will likely lead to some areas getting 24 inches plus as a bonus i just wanted to show our gem model which is the canadian model and it's basically the same story you can see they also have uh, 24 inches plus for some of those regions in Montana. All of the green is 12 inches plus, by the way, there for northern Montana, which is very, very interesting. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I'm starting to feel better, so hopefully I'll be able to continue doing the daily videos for you guys from this point forward. Uh, our October forecast is coming up very, very shortly, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Anyway, guys, stay safe, and if you are in the Rockies, make sure to share your snowfall photos and videos with us on our Instagram. If you Tag us in those photos and videos. We will be showing some of those every Sunday on the YouTube channel as well as on the Instagram. So you could win on that. I'm going to be doing this like every snowstorm that we have this year, trying to get people to share photos and videos because I just think it's so cool to always be able to look back and see those photos and videos. So make sure to take video videos and pictures of the snow falling as well as take pictures of those uh, rollers with the snow under it, obviously, so we can see how much snowfall you got, which is going to be super exciting to see. Can't wait to see stuff like that from you guys. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.